five years of the show since 2017. It's wrapping up. How has it been for you to get to play Dr. Colbert and just be a part of the show? What does it mean to you? Well, first of all, it's the longest job I've ever had. And, um, you know, it's, it, it, I've invested so much of myself and my life and into, into developing this character. And, you know, I dedicate, I dedicate so much of, of who he became and his experience to all of these people that I knew in the 90s who um, got to get a second lease on life after the HIV drugs were introduced, um, after they thought they were going to die. You know, they had to take a look at their lives after giving, being given a second lease on life and figure out what worked for them and what didn't work for them and what kind of life they deserve to lead from here on out. And I thought about that experience a lot. And so I think about them still whenever I look at Dr. Culber. You have led this show, you and this tremendous cast, mm -hmm. for five seasons, brought mm -hmm. a whole new group of Trek fans into mm -hmm. the fandom. It's been amazing. How does it feel with this coming to an end? How, what does Discovery mean to you? Uh, I'm not going to cry. If I really dig in and I'm like, let me tell you what this really means to me, how God has blessed me with this, being able to stand at the helm of this franchise and make television history and make this show family and bring this black woman to life who's so complicated and strong and gentle and vulnerable, this matriarchal leader. And I think that that's what we ultimately tell people. That's what we showcase with Star Trek Discovery is that you can get a second chance. Sometimes it's not just the victories that get you closer to who you're meant to be, but your losses as well. Mm -hmm that everybody around you is the same as you and a reflection of you in a lot of ways. Everybody deserves your love and they deserve your respect. So <laughs> being able to have this show family that'll always go on, these relationships. Wow, I did it without crying. There we go, that's, that's, uh, that's just a little bit of uh, what it means to me <laughs> and what it's meant to me. Thanks for having oh, just, me. Oh, we're so glad to have you. Yes. Uh, we were crying so hard at the finale. The Good, I'm glad it worked. Yay. <laughs> All it works in space. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh, so the first question we've got is, uh, in the finale, we see Michael and Book several decades in the future. So we want to know what you think Saru would be up to in that time. Oh, right. Good question, right? <laughs> well, you know, a, a, as season five concluded before that epilogue showed up, uh, you saw... Saru and Tarina's wedding, and uh, and you and and you saw. I, I think Sir, my storyline is through. Came to a lovely con conclusion already on its own. I think before the epilogue was here, before we knew it was the end of the sh of the series. He's gotten the promotions he's needed and wanted. Uh, he's he's found a really great great fit as a diplomat with the Federation, being an ambassador now. Uh, and he's married to now a, a president of a planet who is also very dignified and has a great sense of duty. They understand each other's duty. Um, so I you know, feel pretty good about that. In the future, where do they go from there? Well, as an aging actor myself, I'm in my 60s now, I would like to know that they have a stress-free life where they're not retired, but but maybe semi, where they have more time to spend together. Maybe their home is on her, her home planet of, of Navarre. Maybe they have a summer home on Kaminar, where I come from. Maybe, uh, and maybe they're still useful as consultants uh, uh, in their in their varied fields. And because I wouldn't want to see their wisdom and their knowledge, and their and their sense of duty go to waste. You know, I'd like to see them active until the day they die, whenever that is. And I'd like to see them also maybe have hybrid kids um, of Vulcan and Kelpian. I don't know what that would look like, but it could be interesting. And uh, and then maybe grandkids. Who knows, right? Yeah, I know giraffes very interested in the mating practices and that, but we'll leave that aside for now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask when when you are looking back over your career, is Saru the character you'd like to be remembered for, and if so, why? Oh gosh, you know, I, I I've often been asked about favorite character after thirty eight years of acting and a lot of it being under rubber bits. There's been so such a varied such a variety of characters I've played. Good and bad, uh, you know, good guys, bad guys. Uh, and so favorites are so imp impossible for me to pick. I've invested so much myself into all of them. Saru is, has a special place. His place in my heart is that he's been the longest running character I've ever played. 
And so I know more about him and more layers of him than any anyone else I've played before. And I've been through more of an evolution journey with him than any other character I've played. I've learned so much from him personally. When he got through his anxiety and his fear and it's gone now, he's living in courage and, and with confidence. I've learned a lot that as, as a human being that um, his circumstances around him didn't change. He changed and his reaction to the to the threat of the day. That's what changed. So I want to know that I can do that as a person. So I think he's taught me so much. Uh, and um, so I, I take I take a piece of him with me into my real life from here forward. And uh, again, as I'm as I'm in my I've, I just turned 64 recently. I'm seeking more human characters now uh, to play on film. And because uh, I have feel like my bucket list has been fully checked off now with with cre uh, otherworldly creatures and non-human characters. Uh, including a Nosferatu that I was able to do um, that should be coming out hopefully this year. It's a it's a a, a smaller independent film, but but with that, uh, Saru has been a, a he uh, he'll he'll probably be remembered as as one of the last characters I played under rubber bits maybe, uh, and certainly um, uh, one of the most uh, emotional and connected ones. The Shape of Water Amphibian Man would be another one that had a romance story that was happily ever after uh, that, um, that I, you know, so if I could be remembered for those two, I'd be happy. Yeah. So with Star Trek Discovery, it really awoke Star Trek again uh, after a little bit, you know, yeah. under the radar. What would you like the legacy of discovery to be mm. um well i'd like to to be rem remembered as, as the, the it, we were the show that brought that brought star trek into uh the streaming world we were the the show that brought it into an overall arc bingeable type storytelling uh because you know the last series that was on before us was enterprise and that was still in the network and syndicated television days where you saw one episode per week and um now you can our, our show came out once a week as well but a lot of fans watch it wait until the season is out and then binge the whole thing back to back because every episode ends with a oh my gosh what happens next <laughs> right so um I, i'd like to be remembered for that uh, i'd also like to be remembered as the show that brought in the whole new era of star trek because from us um our captain from season two captain pike and spock and number one, those three characters went off and made made a very astounding spinoff show, Strange New Worlds, that is a, absolutely a fan favorite. So to know that we were the that we were the granddaddy show that brought that in, uh, that's so lovely to know, and and, and uh, that uh, the audience is there uh, expecting uh, um, a, a, a product that is more cinematic too. We, our our production value has been far above what came before us. We every week was like watching an action thriller movie um, with quiet relationships too happening. All of the characters on the show had um, had a relationship of some sort, whether it was friendship, sibling, romance, whatever, that was complicated and layered and had issues to get through. All that happening while there's huge action sequences and stunt fights and blah, visual effects that are above and beyond what television has been before. So that, I, I think we'll be remembered for that, I hope. In the finale, we see Saru embracing his new role and finding ways of affecting change without the usual support structures of the Disco family that he would normally rely on in the past. Um, I just got to say, it kind of ties into everything, but are you as proud of this character's arc as we are who've watched it from the beginning? Oh, thank you for being proud of that. I, I appreciate that. And, and yes, I am. Uh, when I have that that showdown with uh, Primark to Hall, I'm... I'm taking all of action Saru, all of his physical prowess and putting it into a conversation, right? Uh, and, and right, I'm in a space shuttle with Commander Nan. It's just the two of us. And I'm having a, a conversation with someone who could be a threat. But you know what? So can I be. And I'll tell you why. Because I've been out in the galaxy collecting relationships with all these planets and they're all willing and able to point their guns toward you, Primark to Hall, and, and your evil mission here. So what's it going to be, right? Uh, I loved that feeling, that sense of power there was lovely. And um, and Saru could do that because he's gathered more wisdom and more experience and more allies outside of his of Starship Discovery. Yes, love it. Awesome. 
I think that's all we've got, but yeah. I just wanted to, yeah, I personally thank you for the show. It, you know, bringing Star Trek back to television, uh, uh, making it one of the most unabashedly emotional with unapologetically emotional shows. And that, for sure. that's out yeah. there. Um, I know this is your last go around, but you know, I kind of feel like if you might be able to suit up w one more time, if something came along in the future, you never Starfleet know, Academy. never say never, say never. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Starfleet Academy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if if the call comes, I would be game for it. Depending, you know, everything's negotiable. Absolutely, awesome. Thank you for going on the ride with us for these five seasons too. It's it, it, without you, we wouldn't have had a show. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, take care. <laughs>